It's episode two of this little six part mini series where every day this week I'm going to be talking about a different fragrance from the house of Etat Libre de Orange. And uh, today I'm focusing my attention on another one from the Orange uh, Extraordinaire collection, which is basically their brand's luxury collection. Uh, this one is called Experimentum Crucius, which is, according to the brand's official website, inspired by Isaac Newton's crucial experience theory, which uh, basically showed us that colours are, are not characteristics of objects, but in fact are properties of light, and that white light is actually made up of many colours. Very scientific. Uh, they also challenge the theory of universal gravitation and ask, ask, kind of ask the question, what would have happened if a rose had uh, landed on Newton's head as a pole? to an apple uh, and that's basically what I find interesting about this brand they're always kind of challenging and pushing the boundaries and basically pushing art to the limit which usually results in some very unique and uh, quirky and interesting creations which is definitely evident in this fragrance so to find out all you need to know about this one and whether I'd recommend it as a blind buy stay tuned to this episode of Max Frags <laughs> Yes, hello again everybody and welcome to another episode of Mags Frags. My name's Paul and like I said in the intro, today's featured scent is Experimentum Crucis, uh, which was one of the first releases from the Orange Extraordinaire collection. And this was launched back in 2019, along with another two fragrances that same year called Spice Must Flow and 500 Years. Then in 2020 there was another release called Soul of My Soul which is probably going to be my next pickup because it looks quite interesting. And then finally uh, this year in 2022 we saw a fifth addition to the lineup called Frustration which I actually reviewed yesterday so don't forget to also go and check that one out if you haven't already seen it. But back to this one, and this is classed as a, a unisex cheaper fragrance in an eau de parfum concentration, and it's only available in a 100ml bottle size, which comes with a hefty price tag of £210 per bottle. It's also classed as a, a unisex fragrance. Okay, so into the presentation, and just like the one from yesterday, uh, this one comes in uh, exactly the same kind of matte, uh, matte white presentation box with gold branding on the front. It features like an embossed logo at the front containing the name of the fragrance and also the house. And then down at the bottom, we've just got the size and the concentration, which is also printed in gold. Around the back uh, is the name of the house, uh, and at the top is uh, just, it's all gold with an embossed brand logo there. Down at the bottom is where you'll find all your uh, your product information, the barcode and the batch code. To access the bottle you just need to hold this little uh, tab at the side here and swing the whole corner away to reveal the bottle just sitting there in all its glory against uh, a mirrored background. The bottle this time is in a, a translucent blue colourway uh, and again it contains this like brass embossed detailing on the front like what you get on the box. Uh, you also get a, a gold weighty metal cap uh, with a logo right at the top uh, but this time uh, unlike yesterday the cap does actually click firmly into place on this one so I must have just had a, a defective cap on the bottle yesterday. Uh, there's a gold atomizer and uh, that does deliver a really nice controllable fine mister spray and overall the present on, presentation on this one is really high quality um, but like I mentioned in yesterday's review a magnetic cap would be uh, something I'd expect on a, a fragrance of this point. Uh, you also, I, I didn't mention yesterday as well, you also get this uh, Etat Libre de Orange uh, embossed um, logo into the back of the bottle as well. Okay, so into the note breakdown we go, and uh, the top notes in this one are cumin, green apple, and lychee. In the heart of the fragrance, we've got rose neo absolute, jasmine absolute, and honey. And the base notes in this one are akigala wood, patchouli, and musk. Okay, so the first note that I recognised when I first sprayed this was the rose and it's very prominent and imposing right from the first spray. But there's also lots of other stuff going on and I do pick up on the cumin in this one, unlike the frustration that I reviewed yesterday, which also had it listed as a note, but it wasn't really detectable in that one. 
but this one's a different story and uh, it's definitely present in this one so if you're not too fond of the note of death also known as cumin uh, then you might not love this one because it, you do get quite a bit of a dirty animalic muskiness just kind of hovering around in the background but having said that the overall aroma that this produces is fairly bright and soft uh, and you do get some fresh green apple up top as well as the note of lychee uh, which also produces like a sweet rosy aroma the opening leans more feminine in my opinion with that oriental musky rose but as it dries down the honey kind of just sweetens everything up a touch and then the akigala wood and patchouli just adds a bit more earthiness to the base and then it, I would say it becomes a little bit easier for men to pull off but this is far from being a, a stereotypical masculine fragrance the cumin does stick around like an unwanted drunk guest at a party and for me it's an element that doesn't seem to quite fit in which uh, I think will definitely turn a few people off this one because you end up with more of like a dirty rose accord. I don't own many uh, rose fragrances myself uh, and I'm not the, really the biggest fan of the note personally uh, but I did compare this one to Moschino Toy Boy this morning which also has a, a prominent note of rose in the heart of the scent and I do actually prefer how this one smells the Toy Boy smells quite sour and synthetic uh, when you compare these two side by side and you can really tell that better and more natural smelling ingredients have gone into this one and it kind of just it's, it just seems better blended all around. I would say that this is a creative and mildly challenging fragrance which I reckon more people will like rather than dislike him. Yeah, this one's best suited to the spring and early summer and perhaps even early autumn. It's got a real casual daytime feel to it and it'd make for a, a fairly classy office fragrance. And like I've just said in the last uh, section, it probably leans a little bit more feminine than it does masculine. So you would need to be uh, a fairly confident guy to rock this one. It also has uh, more of a mature vintage scent character, so possibly better suited to someone in their thirties and upwards. I reckon uh, this would make a really good one to wear as like a guest at a wedding though or even uh, to wear on your wedding day with that kind of earthy rose note taking centre stage. I would say that this is definitely not one that I would uh, be reaching for to, uh, to go on a wild night out drinking though because it's, uh, it's just kind of a pleasant floral scent. Yeah, the performance on this is excellent with uh, a really strong projection and it lasts all day. Even on skin, you'll get eight hours plus easily. So if you spray it on clothes, it's uh, a 24 hour scent. I sprayed it on my hand uh, at about nine o'clock this morning and it's now after 3 p.m. and it's still going really strong. So definitely uh, nothing to be concerned about in terms of its performance. Yeah, this does smell natural and expensive with a classic old school perfume quality. And unlike most of today's designer scents, it is unique and interesting. However, for me, it's one that I wouldn't reach for that often, if at all. And uh, for that reason, I'll probably end up selling this one on eBay. It's pleasant enough with a, a relaxed and elegant character, but maybe just a, a touch on the feminine side for my own personal taste. I can see why people really enjoy it and I can also understand why some people aren't so keen on it because you've got yin and yang uh, fragrance notes that are just conflicting with each other and on one hand you've got the soft velvety rose, sweet honey and jasmine and then on the other there's like the cumin and uh, patchouli and akigala wood uh, that are just it's just like throwing mud at it uh, but that's what you, this fragrance is all about it's an experiment of light and shade and uh, this brand is known for the creative and challenging scents. It's not one I'd recommend as a blind buy, especially at £200 a pop, uh, but it's one that I think you should try out and get your nose on if you can, uh, if you get the opportunity to try it out at your local department store. But I've got to say, I much preferred the uh, frustration that I reviewed yesterday. Okay, so that's about it for this second uh, episode in this little six-part mini-series. And if you haven't already seen the first episode, you can uh, check it out by clicking on the thumbnail that's going to appear in this corner of the screen at the end of this video. And uh, don't forget, I'll be back tomorrow and every other day this week giving my thoughts on a, a different scent from this wonderful and wacky fragrance house. So be sure to tune in every night this week for, at 7pm.
Also, if you have enjoyed this content and you found it at all useful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to the channel. It's always great to hear your opinions, your thoughts and your critiques on all of the fragrances uh, that feature on the channel, so keep your comments coming down in the comments section. So once again, thank you very much for tuning in to this latest episode. Stay safe, keep smelling fresh, and I'll see you tomorrow for another one. Bye-bye for now.